Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. Before we get into the configuration of PFSense, I thought it was a good idea to talk through virtualized setup first, because some of you may wish to go down that route anyway. So when we're talking about virtualization, we're talking about using your existing hardware and basically creating another virtual machine that happens to be your firewall. Now, this is the setup that I have and I've used it for a long time. I did originally set out with a physical installation, but as I got more comfortable, I wanted to recoup some of the benefits of having centralization. Plus it makes the upgrade path a lot easier and you have all of the benefits of a virtual machine. So let's have a quick think about what those could be. So firstly, the virtual machine is going to give you portability between devices. It's going to give you a simple backup mechanism and even things like snapshot if you're not doing things like hardware pass-through. It does give you the option for hardware pass-through and I'll discuss that later on, but it also gives me the ability to fail over my firewall, so making it highly available across all of my nodes. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can actually use two firewalls, you can use two physical, you can use two virtual, or you can kind of do the fake HA, which I'm doing. Now, in this video, I'm going to go through how I set up a virtual machine and run PFSense, and I'll talk about some of the configuration options, but the actual installation, I'm not going to cover on this video because I did it in the previous one, and as I mentioned in that video, it is exactly the same. I'll also be referring extensively to some of my pre-existing videos where I've gone into more detail around virtualizing firewalls, specifically on Sophos XG and OpenSense. Now, OpenSense is probably the closer one, but most of what I discuss on those videos is replicable in this video. It's simply virtualizing a firewall. It doesn't matter which firewall you're trying to virtualize. It's talking about all of the same sorts of things when it comes to network cards, choice, plugging things in, some of the settings and configurations, etc. So what do I recommend for a virtualized firewall, in this case PFSense? Well, I still recommend that you have two dedicated NICs. You don't actually have to do that. You can use VLANs to get around that, but let's keep this simple to begin with. And I actually still find that useful for debugging. Having everything on one NIC can become problematic. And when stuff does hit the fan, it's nice to have two discrete NICs. Other than that, the same applies as in my previous video. You've got to meet the minimum requirements, but the beauty of a virtual machine is that you can up them if you need it, provided your host has it. So if you want more cores, you can add more cores. If you want more RAM, more disk space, you can do that. And you can also increase the network speed by replacing the adapter that you assign to it. Now, we're not gonna do pass-through in this, but you can if you want, but I've never really needed to do that because I can basically saturate my 10 gig virtual connection using a virtual NIC. The beauty is if I want to upgrade that in the future, or if you're doing a one gig and you want to add a 10 gig, you can actually just pull the card out and assign the virtual bridge to that new NIC. It will keep things like the virtual MAC address and everything. Whereas if you try and do that in a physical installation, Often what will happen is PCI orders change, names change, and then things like the adapter that your LAN was put on isn't the same, and thus your network will break. Having a virtual machine, you can get rid of all of those problems. So let me head now into Proxmox, and I'll show you how I've got my PFSense set up. And this is actually the one that I used in the previous video for the demonstration. So over on Proxmox, here is the virtual machine I used in the previous video. Now, to do this, we just want to create a normal VM and go through the standard process. But there's a few things that you want to take note of. Now, I'm going to close this and go to the hardware tab. Now, the first is the machine type. Now, officially, they want you to choose the IX440, sorry, the I44FX, which is the default and the tested, albeit they say there is limited support or limited testing for Q35. Now, I've used Q35 for OpenSense for a long time now. The reason being that you have to use Q35 if you want to do hardware pass-through, and I was passing through a NIC at the time. Now, just because I'd done it in OpenSense, and OpenSense and PFSense used to be similar, they've since diverged quite significantly, I did want to test whether this was still viable for PFSense. And I've been running this for a few weeks now and it seems to be stable. I'm not giving that as a stamp of approval, but do note that I've been running this as Q35 for a while. And if you did intend to do a pass through of any hardware, you will obviously have to have a Q35 machine regardless. So 
at least you know the choice and what you'll have to choose. Because I did Q35, I used an OVMF uh, UFE BIOS, um, and that's pretty much it. I gave it four gigs of memory and four cores. The important thing here is to make it the host, so on here the type of host. Now, as I've mentioned before, pretty much any CPU in the past six or seven years, anything with the AES-NI, you want to check that. You need that for PFSense. So by doing the host, I've made sure that I've given it all of the capabilities of my host CPU, which in this case is a 13900H. On top of that, I've given it 32 gigs of storage space. And because this is a virtual machine, I can obviously increase that in the future if needed without any issues. Other than that, really, I've specified a CD drive here. And in that, you'll see that I've put the PFSense CE non-mem stick version. Now, you have to use the non-memory stick version for this one. And I showed you that in the previous video. If you try to use the memory one, it won't work. You'll need to use the ISO one. Not entirely sure what the issue is there, but it's the way in which it loads it in and perhaps a Q35 machine. If anyone knows, do drop me below. And you can see here that I've added two network cards. So just like the previous video, one of these is going to be my WAN and one is going to be my LAN. But before we boot this up, let's just go through a bit of the theory first. So on this machine, you'll see that I've got network zero, network one, and those are assigned to VMBR zero and VMBR one. Now, if you're new and getting into virtualizing your firewall or you're new just to Proxmox and virtualization in general, you might be thinking, what are those? Well, those are virtual machine bridges. They're basically virtual network adapters that are assigned to a physical network adapter. So remember VMBR0 and VMBR1. If I click on this node over here and then I go down to my network, you'll see here I've got VMBR0 and VMBR1. Now, VMBR0 is typically the one that gets assigned first when you boot up Proxmox and install it. This will typically be the one that you access the web UI through. The other one, VMBR1, well, basically what I do is I go to create and I create a Linux bridge and then I give it a name so it automatically increases. So one was just the second one I created, sorry, the first one I created. And I've then put in here the bridge ports. Now the bridge ports are actually the physical ports it's bound to. So if I go back here, you'll see that VMBR0 is actually signed to EMP87S0. And that's this one here. And then this one here is actually this one here. And one of the things I recommend you do is add a comment when you assign these. Um, just helps out my simple brain so that I know exactly which one it is on the back. Now this is my MSO1. And I know that VMBR0 is the RJ45 on the right port. And I know that VMBR1 is the X710. So this one's a two and a half gig port. This one's a 10 gig port. So you can probably have an understanding of which one's gonna be my WAN, that one there. And this one here is gonna be my LAN because I'll have faster traffic on my internal network. And it would be wasted if I use 10 gig for my internet because I only have two gig. So a question that crops up um, a few times in the comments I've seen is, can you assign more than two? Yeah, you absolutely can. You can assign as many as you want pretty much. And that applies also to the physical machine. So if you wanted to get three or four quad port cards, um, you could do that. It's probably wasteful and it's gonna cost you a lot of money, but there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't do that. And if you're just getting started with things like VLANs and all of that sort of stuff, it might make sense to get say a quad port and then just basically create physical LANs on each port, each adapter and manage your firewall that way. In a purest security sense, that's probably the most secure, but let's be honest, we're in the cloud world now, everything's virtualized, so you're pretty safe doing it virtually. So now taking this knowledge here that we've seen and going back to our PF Sense machine, you can also now start to visualize this in your head. Now for simplicity, like I say, I'm using two adapters here that are assigned individually to two physical and those aren't being used by anything else at the moment. 
as I mentioned if you want to get fancy you can do VLANs and stuff and break it up that way or you can just leave these as two discrete ports on your machine and still take advantage of them that way. That's what I recommend for you getting started out but up to you what you decide to do. Now as I mentioned earlier in the video um, there are other advantages of what a virtual machine can do. So in that physical one that you've got set up if you've only used a single drive for example you've got a problem if that drive fails that means that there's no replication and no high availability. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about OpenSense and what I'm currently running at the moment but forget it's OpenSense assume that it's PFSense because this same process would apply and do go and check out that video that I mentioned before because it goes into much more detail about how to do it I'm just going to show you what I'm doing currently. So if we have a quick look onto my other nodes I'm not even sure which one it on because it doesn't really matter you can see here OpenSense high availability I've called it. Now if you think about it traditionally you would need two nodes and typically you would need two WAN IPs but you don't need that in this kind of pseudo HA that I'm doing and the way I've achieved that is by basically making this use Ceph storage. So if I go to my data center and I go to Ceph you'll see here that I've got Ceph which is distributed file system across all of my machines. Now that means that for whichever virtual machines I want to select it for and I can show you that by going down to say this node here and then clicking on Ceph you'll see that on this configuration I've got three drives all set up there if we hop back into the data center and we go to high availability In HA, you'll see that I've actually got this VM100, which is this OpenSense HA. I've set that to use this Ceph cluster. So basically on each of these machines, you'll see that there is a VM disks drive here, here and here. And that's replicated in real time across all three of these nodes. And what's actually happening is this OpenSense machine here, anytime it writes logs or does something or has to save anything to the disk, is actually replicated to this machine and this machine. Such that if I want to reboot this machine here, this firewall here will automatically fail over to one of the other machines. Or in the worst case, this machine dies, has a hardware fault, whatever, it should also fail over onto one of those other nodes and there shouldn't be any downtime and I demonstrated that in a previous video. Now that setup is going to work as well with PFSense all but guaranteed. I will show that in a later video but I can't see any reason why it wouldn't. Importantly you don't have to use Ceph for this. Ceph is a bit more complicated to set up and it's really bad for consumer drives. If you already have something like a NAS for example you could just use a network share and then save the hard disk for this or the virtual drive onto that NAS. Now you're probably only going to get a single point of failure there i.e. if the NAS dies the, the firewall dies um, but it is a separate machine from your cluster. That's kind of why I've gone with the cluster here because I've now got three machines that replicate it I wouldn't have to buy three NASs. So going back to the PFSense machine once you've got everything set up here and it's a good idea to go into the options and say to start a boot I haven't done that yet just because I'm still using OpenSense at the moment and I'm still going through the period of evaluating PFSense but that will mean that anytime this machine reboots or anything in your cluster reboots you always want that firewall to come back up and running because you're probably going to lock yourself out of your machines if your network isn't ready. So once you've got your virtual machine set up, you basically need to go to the console and just click start. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't going to do the installation process because I showed that in the previous video and it's exactly the same as for a physical installation. But provided that all goes well, it should simply boot now into your uh, virtual machine, your virtual PFSense, and you should be able to access it exactly the same as you did previously. So in the last one you had a physical WAN port which was dedicated solely for the LAN and the WAN. In this one you've kind of got dedicated but you've got virtual adapters assigned to each of those. Basically the same process so once this is booted up after your installation make sure that you plug this machine or whatever machine you want to do your administration or your switch for example you plug that into the LAN port and you stick your internet into your WAN port. 
Once you've done that, you can see here, I've actually got an internal IP address. That's just because I've got this PFSense plugged into my current OpenSense, but that's purely academic. It still gives me all the functionality and the ability to test this without breaking the rest of my network. It just sits downstream of another firewall, much like yours currently does with your ISP. So for example, now, if I plug in into the virtual adapter that's assigned to a physical dedicated NIC on my Proxmox node, in this case here, I would assign it whichever one VTNet is. If we go back to the hardware tab, VTNet is going to be, I think it's this one. So VMBR1, I just plug my Ethernet from this machine into that port on the back of my virtual Proxmox machine, and we should be able to access then the PFSense dashboard. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully this has given you some confidence to go ahead and create a virtual PFSense instance. It's the way I do it. It's the way I recommend once you're comfortable. It makes sense to recoup your investment on your virtual machine hardware, your hosts. So, and it also gives you the high availability option and an easier upgrade path in the future. Now, obviously there's a downside of if one machine goes down, you bring everything down. If you're only using one host and you want to reboot it, you're gonna lose your network. So you decide what's right for you, but I strongly recommend going down this route once you're comfortable. So in the next video in this series, might not be the next video, we're gonna get into the actual configuration of PFSense where I'll go through pretty much all of the main features. If there's something you want me to cover, do drop it in the comments below. If it's sufficiently popular, I'll consider putting it into the next video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.